Well, South Australia has achieved liftoff today after the Australian Space Agency headquarters officially opened in Adelaide. The new space station will aim to inject the sector with $12 billion and 20,000 new jobs. For more, joining us live is space analyst Morris Jones. Good to see you, Hello. Morris. Thank you for your time. You. This has been something that's been talked about in Australia for decades. Now, finally, we're seeing the headquarters opened in Adelaide. As I just outlined, the Prime Minister has outlined some pretty lofty goals for the centre today. Are they achievable? I think a lot of those goals are certainly achievable, but I don't think it will generate as much revenue as the Prime Minister or other representatives seem to think. Uh, that being said, it's worth doing. It will generate benefits for the economy, for industry, uh, and for society as a whole. And even though it's a, a fledgling agency, we're already reaping benefits from it. What sort of benefits already are we seeing? The agency has raised Australia's profile on an international scale. Uh, a lot of people or, or nations around the world didn't take us seriously as space players because we did not have an agency of our own. And since the agency has been established, it's popped up regularly uh, in foreign policy discussions, not, not just in uh, space discussions, but the Prime Minister has uh, has raised the issue in some of his international travels and so we're re they're, they've hit the ground running and uh, I think in some ways even though it's a small agency it already seems to be punching above its weight. Well that's good to hear at least. What are the priorities going forward for the Centre, Morris? What would you like to see it do? Well, the uh, agency wants to act as an incubator uh, to local space industries. We, we already have capabilities in Australia that aren't generally well known, uh, and it's, it's out there to encourage what we have and also to grow new ventures uh, that uh, could serve us well in the future. And the, these are practical things uh, like navigation or communications and environmental monitoring and the development of science and technology. So it, it's there to help uh, a small industry grow even larger and I think it will succeed in that role. Morris, I understand around $150 million of, of taxpayer funds will be going to Australian businesses who want to partner with NASA's Moon to Mars initiative. What sort of role mm -hmm. could Australian businesses really play in supporting that mission? Well, Australia has a long and proud tradition of working with NASA on deep space missions, uh, especially with regard to space tracking, but also with the development of scientific experiments. And so we, we could see niche components like a, a parts for a, a, a moon lander or an experiment for, for the astronauts to perform uh, being developed in Australia, and NASA could contract us to do those things. So there's prestige. There are deeper long-term benefits, but it's also uh, a commercial reality. You get paid if you can supply some of these services to NASA, and NASA is a willing client. They've been there for a long time working with us, so I think it could be profitable in all sorts of ways. Morris, what do you make of that um, Mars initiative? We know that it's one of Donald Trump's pet projects. How far off do you expect it will be that we actually see uh, success on that front? Well, I don't think they're going to do it in the time frame that they're aiming for, but I think uh, further down the track, uh, we probably will see NASA returning astronauts to the moon and uh, doing a lot more than they did in the Apollo days. And uh, that will serve as a stepping stone for developing plans to go on to Mars. But the Mars venture is going to take a lot longer than the moon venture. Why haven't we been back to the moon in recent decades? If we can aim for Mars, why not make a return to the moon? Well, the moon is largely unexplored, and it, al it also serves as a way to get our practice runs in living and working in deep space, uh, a, a, a way to get the skills that we need to go onwards to Mars. And a lot of those skills just haven't been practiced since the 1960s. And of course, we have better technology uh, and a better understanding of what it's like to keep humans alive in space for longer periods. Uh, that's what they've been doing on the space station. And so one thing that we've learned it's going to be far riskier and uh, dangerous to go to Mars than we thought several decades ago. And so we really need to do our homework uh, and get the groundwork done before we can consider going there.